Hello everybody, welcome back to the Final Fantasy no X walkthrough. We have just completed the Jose comes, Temple Cloister of Trials and, our journey begins and uh, obtained the Aeon Ixion. We're leaving once Yuna gets here. Uh, Ixion, if it wasn't left. obvious saw already, too. is a lightning elemental. Uh, meaning that any uh, lightning damage done to it will heal it instead. Get ready for the journey. Uh, so ahead. just like uh, Ifrit, you can actually cast like a lightning spell on on yourself, essentially to to heal yourself. So, uh, you know, pretty pretty useful. I'm going back to Besaid. With Luzu gone. Yeah. It'd be hard fighting alone, wouldn't it? Most of the other Crusaders have already left. I'll go soon. Alright, so it looks like Gata has decided to travel back to Besaid uh, Island. Uh, obviously, Titus comments there that it would be she was working probably until pretty dawn. tough to fight, fight alone wounded, or without him, I suppose. Uh, as okay. it you know, it kind of seemed like they were, I mean, they were pretty tight, so for now, then. Yeah, it makes sense. <sighs> ah, morning. What? Morning? Don't worry. But it's morning. <gasps> I'm so sorry. I'll get ready right away. Just a moment. Uh, oh, oh. Don't worry. It's okay. <sighs> Yo, sleepy head. Sorry. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Please forgive me. Really, there's no rush here. Your hair. <laughs> A summoner with bad hair. What's the world coming to? You could have woken me up. Uh, we called to you, but with all that snoring. Uh, oh. mm. What is it today? Everyone's picking on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you too, Sir Oren? Once Lady Yuna fixes her hair, we leave. <laughs> I hadn't really laughed like that in a long time. It was only later that I realized. The only one really laughing then was me. Laughing must have been the only thing keeping them going. All right. Now that everybody's picked on you know, a little bit, it's time to get this show on the road. Um, I think the NPCs here have items for us, so let's check. Oh, not that guy. There we go. So there's another guy that, uh, you know, believes now that Yevon's teachings are the uh, is essentially the only way. <clears throat> so another casualty of Operation Meehan, I suppose, in a in a different sense. All right, potion times there. Not too bad. A eh, couple items there. Off so early, Lady Yuna. You must be exhausted after working so hard last night. Will you be okay? I feel that I have rested enough, but thank you for your kindness. Will you be leaving too? Yes. First we cross the moon flow, and then we head north in search of chocobos to replace those we have lost. Once we find chocobos, our mounted forces will ride again. Huh? Aren't you missing someone? Captain! Wait for me! What took you so long? We're leaving. You expect me to keep up with a chocobo? Lady Yuna, I wish you good fortune. El- Ma'am. 
Hey, can I just rest a sec? No complaints. All right, so going back to what Oren said uh, was that, you know, the faithful lived and the not faithful <laughs> didn't. Where to next? We cross the Moonflow. Gotcha. Moonflow, baby, here we come. Uh, or at least now the the ones that were that were not faithful have essentially become faithful. I guess. How how about that? That's uh, I think pretty accurate to say as well. All right. So there is a couple couple of people that got injured, and here we have Shalinda once again. We can all learn. It's only the truly faithful. Have a hope of defeating sin. All right, so there you go, Shalinda, uh, reaffirming what I just said—that the only the faithful have a hope of defeating sin. Uh, and again, you know, Shalinda is pretty uh, naive, I think. Um, but I don't know. She, another, she's a she's a good minor character. She, you know, she'll she'll pop up from time to time and. And just add a little, add a little more to the story. So she's, she's, in, she's, she's minor, but she's still important. Uh, but anyways, uh, on on the road here, there's a couple of treasures off of the off of the trail. And uh, generally, what I like to do here for these Ochus, obviously, I bring in Waka to uh, to finish them off. And uh, you know, just generally swapping your characters as uh, as needed to, to keep everybody leveling. Uh, again, otherwise, if you <clears throat> if you start neglecting your characters, that that will uh, it will become a problem later on. So again, I would I'd recommend swapping in your in your characters. Uh, what I've started to do though here, especially for the walkthrough, and I think I'll I'll, I'll keep going on with it, is that. Um, I won't be probably swapping in characters typically like I would normally do, uh, and what I'll do instead to keep the walkthrough kind of going so you need someone with magic skills. Uh, is just swapping the characters as needed. See, I'm, now unit. again, you know, <laughs> I'm doing exactly the opposite of what I'm talking about. But, um, from from uh, from where I'm at, and I'm I'm a little bit farther on, and probably another three videos past this. But anyways, um, what I'm trying to do is not swap in too many characters too cut down on the actual battle time uh, because again you know th there gets to be a certain point where it's not uh, that useful um, it's you know there's there's continuity that and that that can be that can be said for it but um, you know I, I don't always like to cut out a ton of these, uh, random battles because like, then that's the other you know thing I touched on in one of the other videos is just that um, there are a lot of random encounters. Once you actually do get to the random encounters, there's a ton of them. So then, um, you know, it kind of gets to kind of gets to be a bit much. Uh, but anyways, so like I said, what I'll probably end up doing then is uh, is not swapping in my characters in and out so much. Uh, and instead, what I'll probably do is take short breaks, short kind of like leveling breaks, so that uh, so that my characters don't get you know far behind. And then that will also, you know, then I will have to out a ton of uh, random encounters. And you know, waste a ton of, ton of extra time. So here I just summoned Ixian. A couple my of my characters were poisoned. Nice and I to meet you. want to swap in a bunch of different... You know, a bunch of characters over there. So I just decided to summon him in and... And uh, take these guys down. Overkilled both of them. Uh, that is one thing I'll say. The the aeons are all fairly accurate, uh, if I remember right. Anyway, I don't I don't remember missing with them much. Look, one of Kimari's friends looks just like him. What? Both follow summoners on all fours. Hornless goatlings. Hornless! Hornless! 
<laughs> you come to insult Kimari? Wrong. We come to warn little Kimari. Summoners disappear. Never return. Next will be Kimari's summoner. Poor Kimari lost his horn. Next lose his summoner. Pitiful Kimari, howl alone, howl alone. <laughs> Do those two uh, got something against you? What? They were just picking on you? Kimari will deal with them. And I'll help. Kimari alone. But, uh... It's Kimari's problem. You can't interfere. It's a rule. I'm worried. Let the Ronso deal with Ronso problems, yeah? That's how it's always been. I mean, I'm worried about those summoners disappearing. They aren't just disappearing into thin air. Hey, if we Guardians do our job, no problem, right? Oh. Confident. Yeah. All right, so even the troublemakers, Biran and Yankee, uh, you know, are commenting that summoners have been disappearing. I like Titus's response. It's just, hey, as long as we do our jobs, it's not an issue, right? So, uh... You know, Everyone, again, look I, know, I, like, I like his response to that. <laughs> maybe a little cocky, maybe a little naive. I don't know if I'd say naive or not. I'm not sure. Just a good view, anyways. Um, and obviously, so the whole Biron and Yankee, uh, I don't know, issue with, with uh, Kamari there goes a bit deeper. My turn. Uh, and obviously, that gets revealed a little bit more. As the story progresses, from frigid uh, suffice to say, uh, Titus says, you know, hey, we'll help, and then, you know, everybody else kind of butts in and says, no, Ronzo problems are Ronzo problems, and basically, kamari has got to solve it on his own, and he very much does, so he's, uh, and he, I'll, I'll just say it right now, he's a perfect example of, um, go, of, a, go, of a character go. that if you... If you kind of neglect him, it can become a problem because there is a there is a, a battle later on where it's him alone, and uh, it can be a bit more difficult if you neglected him throughout the game. So again, a uh, perfect example of of uh, you know of a of a character to not neglect. <clears throat> uh, we're getting close here to the end. We've got a couple more surgeons off to the side here, but. Uh, obviously, the O2s have a ton of health, so I generally just beat them down with Waka. Now, unfortunately, especially with this fight, you can see here, you got two flyers and an O2, so that means a lot of a lot of business that, uh, that Waka would have to take care of. Now, the good thing is, uh, Ryu can actually I think cast his fire on the. Okay. I guess this one goes against twice, I guess. Anyways, so she can take down the flyers as well. I'm here. Uh, that's one always. That's one good thing about magic in this game that I don't know that I've, I've mentioned. That is, it just plain doesn't miss. So. Um, <clears throat> Training, huh? It's kind of a theme I noticed uh, with a uh, with a few. Um, games, if not all. I don't, I don't know if there's a game that I can think of that Magic can actually miss. But anyways, uh, as it applies to this game, uh, it's extremely useful. So, uh, you know, there's a couple of type, types of enemies, uh, notably the, the flyers that Waka can take out, as well as the, I don't know, I always like to call them the fast movers. They're typically the little, uh, like, dog-looking, you know, a enemies. And, uh... You know, the problem is with some of your characters, uh, Oren, for example, he, he doesn't doesn't necessarily have the accuracy to hit those. And so, uh, you know, Lulu, I guess, can make a good a good character for taking out those kind of enemies. <clears throat> um, 
So that being said, I've been doing a little bit of reading on, uh, you know, pe people's preferences for sphere grids and whatnot. And uh, one of the one of the reasons that people really like uh, you know, the expert grid is so that you can go down the the black mage path with Yuna, and that makes sense. Uh, you know, I don't know if I agree with it just because of you know her white white magic is pretty nice too, but um, you know there's definitely something to be said for it because Zen uh, uh, to that token and going on what I've already brought up is that. You know, you've got one more character in your lineup that could, that could, you know, potentially deal with those, those monsters that are a little, uh, you know, faster moving, and, and thus you could, you could have some more problems with other characters. With. So, so there's that. We meet again. I heard you took part in Operation Meehan. You've seen that Machina aren't the answer. In the end, only summoners can hope to defeat Sin. You are right. I must train harder. I can help with that, if you like. I propose a contest of Aeons. A friendly contest, of course. I'm ready. That's the spirit. But before we begin... I have healed your Aeons. Well, shall we? All right, so here's our next challenge of Belgian, and just like the other ones, there's a little bonus for if you actually win. Uh, I don't remember what it was in this case. Uh, like two, uh, two dragon scales or something like that. Uh, but anyway, she's going to summon Ixion, oh, and I am going to fully suggest summoning Ifrit. Uh, the good thing or at least for me anyway, was that uh, if it was already in overdrive. So, uh, what I think I end up doing here is just ripping off of his overdrive right away, and then uh, I think I'm going to take a bunch of damage, which is unfair. That's, that's kind of how it goes. Generally, with these uh, with these duels, these Aeon duels, what you actually want to do is uh, you know do, do a bit of damage, work up your overdrive, and then use your overdrive to finish Don't the Aeon off. And again, Show me what you've learned. because the enemy can get so many turns in a row, in a row if you don't finish them off. Uh, because of the time it actually takes to uh, uh, recharge. I don't know what the best, best way to say that is. But anyways, again, uh, usually the best way to handle these guys is to finish them off. Uh, again, no, unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, I just feel like, what was that? About 5,800? And I don't remember how much health Ixion has. But uh, what I what I then just do is heal, uh, you know, over and over, or use his turns to heal. And now, look at this, he's going to get like three turns in a row, so that's going to be a little rough. In all honesty, it probably would have been a better idea to just use like the shield command instead, although that turned out just fine. He evaded once and then... To the two final hits actually yeah. So the, the two final hits put them back in the overdrive, which I'm going to use again. <clears throat> and boy, if that doesn't, yeah, I was going to say, if that didn't finish off Ixion, boy, that would have been, we would have been in real, real trouble there after. So that is how I did it. Um, again, now, if, if you, uh, if you don't have the overdrive, going into the fight, you can, uh, you can play it out a little differently, you know, keep yourself healed up. Uh, shield if you need to uh, boost. You're also, good. if you, you, if you think that's fairly. a good idea. Here, your prize. Go on, take it. All right, so that was that was the case there. We got two dragon scales for that, and I think that teaches what is it? Water? What? Water? Off? Water or Watera, whatever. However you want to say the second level of that spell, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, and so, so grayed out abilities there, obviously, are the ones that you can't teach or have already learned. Uh, I think the tutorial does a pretty decent job of explaining that. Uh, Fire Out is a great spell to teach to Ifrit, which I really need to do. I just realized now that I haven't done that yet. 
Uh, Veil Four. I'll be honest. I don't. I don't usually learn a whole lot of abilities. I look forward to meeting you again. Uh, with Veil Four because I don't use Veil Four much. Uh, he he doesn't have a you know. There's no element that heals him, so I just usually don't even bother. Um, he's he's kind of good fodder, I suppose, still for some of the bosses that can one-shot your AM. So what I usually end up doing for those ones is, <coughs> excuse me, I'll summon summon Veil for in below the overdrive, and then uh, and then you know it usually just gets one shot. So again, there's certain bosses in the game that'll do that, or they have that mechanic, and so it's still Veil for still at least somewhat useful for that, but. Um, Anyways, again, not one of my favorite Aeons. Uh, and again, because of that uh, that lack of an elemental property. No worries. Uh, so that being said, though, again, now there are uh, there are plenty of other Aeons that can that can be used. My turn now. And uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of decent abilities that you can teach your Aeons. Uh, cheer, you know, there's there's the, the buffing ones that kind of like your, your party members can do. Aim, uh, and I forget what we use is, but <clears throat> you know, again, if, if that's something that you that you want to do, go right ahead. I don't know how much you know I really use those skills. I'll be honest, it's it's not very much, uh, but I shouldn't say that it's that, that they're not useful because I think that they are. Uh, usually, though, uh, or I'd say at least 90% of the battles that I use Aeons for is, you know, like trash that uh, that I'm worried about, like, status effects uh, hitting my, my characters. And uh, if, for fights like that, you know, you're not going to be spending turns casting cheer and aim now. and stuff, you know. You're just going to you're just gonna summon in and, and go to town, you know, and just finish the stuff off as fast as you can. But, uh, you know, that being said, there are fights where I could, you know, potentially see some uses for that. Alright. We gotta be getting, coming up on the moon flow, I know, here. And I'm trying to do a decent job, I think, of, you know, stealing from the different enemies. I don't know if I would say that, um, you know, for a while, I don't think there's really anything that's like, oh my gosh, you absolutely have to be stealing, you know, these every time you, you, uh, you know, get into fights with them, but, <clears throat> but it's good to have just a, you know, a good, a good amount of those items to, uh, to build up, and then, you, I don't know if you saw there, but Lulu, Lulu finally got her Slayer Overdrive mode. I typically don't use that one. I actually like Warrior more, but, um, for Lulu, being that she... Gosh, she almost one-shots everything with her magic. That may not be a bad overdrive mode to, to use. Whoa! This is the moon flow. These are moon lilies. They say that clouds of pyreflies gather here when night falls. The entire river glows like a sea of stars. Really? Hey, I got an idea! We're not waiting till nightfall. Ah. Hmm. Then, once we beat Sin, we're coming back. Hey, we better hurry or we'll miss the shoe puff. Shoe puff? That's some kind of boat? Hmm. Alright, <clears throat> so we have finally arrived at the moon flow. And it's time to launch the shoe puff. Uh, that was a pretty bad impression, sorry. Maybe next time. <laughs> What the? Whoa!
This is a shoe puff. Whoa! Uh, let's ride! Come on, let's go! All right. We board soon as we're ready, huh? All righty. So there you get the first glimpse of the shoe puffs, which I think are pretty cool. Uh, a couple of Phoenix Downs and a Waka here. I don't remember what he's selling. Okay, it looks like weapons and items. Um, yeah, I don't think I buy anything here, so eh. Yeah, I don't really think that there was anything worth buying. Uh, although it does look like I'm going to clean house here a little bit. Um, <clears throat> typically, uh, what I usually end up doing is like hoarding up a ton of different items. And a lot of the times, they just sit and waste space in my inventory. And then eventually, like later on, I'll end up having like too much stuff in my inventory. So I'll have to sell it all at once, which is pretty annoying. You know, I tend to I tend to hang on to things that I think that I might use in the future, and then when it comes right down to like the point in time with the, where it would actually be useful, I don't end up doing it. So, <laughs> you know, I think this this time around, I'm probably just gonna try to uh, you know sell off anything that I don't think I'm gonna be using. Uh, that halberd there has got a magic plus twenty percent on it. That's pretty huge, but um, you know, for me, I I'm not building Kamari's magic. So I don't know that that's going to be useful at all. It's probably be more useful if I just sold it. Shoe puffs. I haven't ridden one in so long. What? You've been on one of these? Well, just once. Ten years ago, with Kamari. Remember? Shoe puff shook. Yuna fall in water. Shoe puff scoop up Yuna with long nose. You not jump in three more times for fun. Kimari worried. Whoops. Yuna had fun. Kimari happy. I lived in the city of Bevel until ten years ago. I moved to Besaid after my father defeated Sin. Kimari was with me the whole way. Bevel? It's the biggest city in Spira. The main temple of Yevon is there. All right. So. Miran is troublemaker, but uh, Yuna obviously made this lie. trip uh, when she Someone was what would have been eight. That was not lied. I don't know. I think maybe, right. I, maybe I have the I'll time be wrong, or maybe she was ten, something like that. Anyways, um, so she made the trip, but in reverse. Obviously, she was going to Besaid. Uh, and here on this, uh, so on this side of the of the the wharf, I think is what they're calling it here. Uh, there's all kinds of merchants, and now you know some of these guys have some I don't know kind of cool stuff, but at the same time, I just I don't know. It's super overpriced, and I don't, I don't know. It just really didn't feel like anything was worth buying. So I mean, you can check out the shops and decide for yourself. Uh, and if you want, you can check these different. Um, the people around here. I don't remember if there's any uh, Blitzball players or not. I know for sure on the opposite side of the wharf there is one or two. I just don't remember if there's any on this. Ten years ago. Ah, a history lesson? Jack saw his first shoe puff here. Surprised, he drew his blade and struck it. Wh why? He was drunk. Thought it was a fiend. Oh, brother. We offered all the money we had as an apology. Jet never drank again. But it would seem that shoe puff still works here. All right, so a little bit of character development for Jet there, and he's not even here. I like that. I don't think so. It's a bad idea, yes. Please, we beg of you. Impossible! Impossible! What's wrong? This guy won't let our chocobo on the shoe puff. Ah, it is kind of big. It's just not fair. Uh, he 
does have a point, though. So what? We just leave him behind? Hey, I didn't say that. Just... <sighs> it is no good. We will have to find another way. We will find a ford where we can cross on foot. Yes, Captain, sir. But that'll take days. Where there's a will, there's a way. Oh, boy. That's our captain. Yeah. <laughs> where there's a will, there's a way. Those words stayed with me. I wonder how Captain Lucille is doing. Where there's a will, there's a way. Those are pretty good words. Would you like to hear a bit about the wondrous Shupa? Very well. There are many things we do not know about the Shupa. For example, what does it eat? It eats nothing. The water it sucks through its schnoz somehow supports its considerable size. Some theorize it eats teeny weeny waterborne organisms. Hmm. And that, as they say, is that. Perhaps you'd like to hear a bit about the Hypello, hmm? Hmm. The Shupuff handlers belong to a race of water dwellers known as the Hypello. They may be slow on land, but in the water they're quick as silvery fish. You'd think they'd make admirable players of Blitzball. But their lackadaisical disposition draws them to less strenuous pastimes. Hmm. And that, as they say, is that. I believe I've said all there is to say. Alright, so there's a little history lesson from Macon. Uh, and this guy, look at this guy, this looks like Jamal. I, uh, I recruited him for my Blitzball team, but I don't, that, that, I don't, I don't think that actually is Jamal. I think Jamal is always in Luca at the, uh, what is it, the, oh, no, I can't remember it. Oh, the Blurry Moon there, that wouldn't necessarily be a bad weapon, but I already had the one with initiative on it, so I just stuck with that. And I think this is a, I think that's a Blitzball player right there. Let the so, tribe know uh, when you're ready. The agent. I want to say it's Shu. Uh, I think any or Shami, something like that. One of those two. Riding a uh, but anyways, that much fun. Uh, we gotta cut it here. So like, comment, subscribe. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Hope the guys are helpful though. Hope Some you're enjoying things, them. Little boys never grow out of. All right. Thanks for watching. Right. Bye.